Hi there folks, this is Matthew Seville with SLRLounge.com and this video is going to be about uh, this image here which we uh, did a previous video on about how it was captured and we showed you guys the uh, lighting diagram which you can see here about how we were on the rocks and it was kind of precarious and I had to set the flash. Anyways, a lot of you guys uh, were asking about how to process this type of image because here's the two original frames if you uh, look at them like this and it's just a simple panorama so you know this this end here and this end here um, but anyways I just wanted to record this follow-up video uh, to process this image for you now a little warning in advance it's actually the actual merging of a panorama is quite anticlimactic. It's it's uh, not very exciting because to be honest, Photoshop does a great job of automatically merging stuff. Uh, back in the day, you know, five year, five six years ago, before Photoshop got really good at merging, I used to do all of my panoramic merging by hand by warping each and every uh, you know edge to, so that it matched perfectly. Since I couldn't afford nodal point gear and all that nerdy stuff you know, the panoramic equipment that costs hundreds of, hundreds of dollars. I couldn't afford any of that, so I used to do all my merging by hand in Photoshop. Anyways, nowadays, even though I probably handheld these images, they're taken at uh, a 90th of a second, I may have handheld these images, but they still go together in Photoshop pretty perfectly. So let's get into how this would be uh, processed. All right, so the first thing that I have to do is process these original uh, frames. And I just hit D to go into the develop module. And I've got my SLR Lounge preset system over here. I'm going to uh, do a full reset on these for you. Reset, reset. OK, they're already reset. Let's start with Vivid Landscape. And holy cow, uh, it's hard to do Vivid Landscape on people. Let's go to Soft Portrait, and then but then use the HDR setting here. HDR light, HDR strong, HDR max. Uh, well, I like how this looks here, but I just don't like how it is on their skin tones. So step number one is I'm going to turn down my sharpening because I'm going to do that later. Uh, what's the default? 25 is the Adobe default. I'm going to do that later once I get the PSD back into Photoshop. The next thing I'm going to tackle is this weird skin tone that I've got going on. Uh, the tint needs to go down. I'm at plus seven. I'm going to hit my down arrow hovering over this just to drop it down. And then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my HSL. I'm going to go to saturation. I'm going to, oh, I'm already down there on the red. Okay, so yeah, that's what the preset does here for this. It's trying to save the day, but I've already just got too much, way too much color here. And the reason, by the way, I'm, the reason I'm looking at this image instead of this image here is even though this has brighter flash on them, uh, his expression is a little bit more uh, stern than this one. He's got a little bit better. He's got a great smile in this one. So I, unfortunately, I have to process this one. That's a darker shot. So anyways, let's grab our brush next. And I'm going to hit it with uh, a preset brush here, heavy unenhanced HDR skin. I'm going to hold down space and click to zoom in. And then I'm just going to brush it on like this as uh, my flow. Yeah, my flow and feather density are all, all the way up. So I'm going to hit Control or Command Plus to go in even further. And I'm just going to gently get it all over uh, like this. Just uh, brush it on a bigger brush. Do a smaller brush for the edges here like this. OK, so I'm getting it off like that. Just, gonna, just trying to get rid of the, the overall craziness of the uh, skin tone from that HDR effect. So let's brush this. I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush and kind of go over it like that. A little bit smaller brush for the edges here. I'm just trying to do this quickly. You guys can take more time on your photos, of course. Uh, and so let's uh, do the big brush here for this. And then just go over that, go over that. The next thing that I need to do is I need to kind of give it a general tap. Uh, so that it doesn't look too crazy that that it's you know that they're gonna stand out if I just do it like this So anyways, I'm gonna lower my flow down a bunch and then just tap it like that Once so that I'm just kind of if I hit O to show the I'm just kind of tapping it overall so that it gets a little bit Over the whole area. Let me hit O again to hide that. I'm gonna hit K again to hide all of that So now I've got these two images like this 
this one's still here like that, and I'm not I'm not affecting it because brushes don't auto sync. That's a handy thing to know. Um, let's uh, let's do a little bit more on the heavy unenhance. Uh, just kind of brush it down there a little tiny bit. Brush it around. Brush it around. All right, there we go. That looks good. Now I am ready to do the panoramic stitch. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go edit in merge to panorama in Photoshop. It's going to bring up the Photoshop dialog for how to merge it. My favorite is cylindrical. And then since I'm using the SLR Lounge presets or just the general corrections for everything else, all I'm going to do is leave this first one uh, click blend images together. I don't need vignetting removal or geometric distortion correction because that's better to be done in Lightroom beforehand. So I'm going to hit OK and let it do its thing. And it's opening up these images and aligning the layers. It'll align and blend the layers. If you have a slower computer or a regular computer, uh, it might take a little bit longer. But this, this computer has an SSD, so it kind of worked pretty fast. Uh, so anyways, there you go. Honestly, that's it. I'm almost done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control or Command E to merge those. Since I don't need, the, I don't need those, uh, these, those old layers uh, because it's such a simple process to merge it like that. Uh, all I really now oh, let's hit Control or Command Z here to go back. I just want to glance at this edge right here where where it kind of has this seam, and then I'm just going to hit Reveal. Yep, I just want to check and make sure there isn't some giant uh, weirdness in the in the in the seam there when the merge. Okay, so now I'm just going to hit Control E again, merge those together. My next task is to just do a little tiny bit of warping. So I'm going to hit Control A or Command A, and then I'm going to go Edit transform warp. Now what I'm doing here is I'm trying to just fit more of this image into the uh, into the crop that needs to happen so I don't lose some of these angles and, and stuff here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down a little bit so that it gets closer to vertical. I'm going to drag this over so now I've got kind of a vertical line so my cropping won't throw away too much. So again I'm going to do that over here like this and let's see, bring that in maybe just a tiny bit. Almost done. I like that right there like that. So let's see. Um, uh, they, they, nobody, it never hurts to make people look a little taller. So I'm going to squish this down, but then I'm going to grab here and pull, in, pull them back up a little bit so that they look nice and tall. That's always, that's always, is, this is like my heroic pose that I always call it. You know, the uh, somebody in the uh, comments section called it the "We survived the apocalypse, yay!" type pose. So that's kind of what this is. And I'm going to hit Enter, and there we go. Now, when I hit C for crop, I can just pull this in, and I'm barely throwing away any image. So right there, like that. Pull this down. Pull this in, like that. And there we go. Just and and. Uh, sometimes I'll leave, if I have a very empty blank area, I'll leave these corners like that because I know that I can clone or warp them back very easily. So I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to hit M for marquee. Um, here's a real quick trick. Uh, I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to do edit, transform, warp. I have a hotkey, alt, control, W that I programmed so I just do that. But uh, basically here's what I do. I go in like this and I just quickly drag it up like that. So instead of cloning and having it look risk looking weird in the clone, I just do that and it's a real quick trick. So watch this. I'm going to select that, control alt w. You can program your own keys to do that uh, and we can do another video on how to customize that. But anyways, I'm just going to drag it up. I'm going to zoom in to see, make sure that it uh, doesn't look weird. There we go. Hit enter, hit control or command D to deselect that. Check to make sure there aren't any seams, all weird seams or anything there. And boom, that's done. I'm going to hit Control or Command S, Control W, and then wait for it to save. And Alt Tab back to Lightroom. And here we go. There's the final image right there like that. And we're pretty much done. Uh, to be honest, since this is such an important shot, I probably might spend another 30 minutes doing crazy, you know, burning and dodging on these whole areas. And we don't have time to get into that. Oh, another thing I would do is I would go back into Photoshop and Photoshop out this, uh, this sandal there. She did not hike across the rock in high heels. Uh, that would be uh, very risky. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you in the next tutorial. All right, take care.